Hey, thanks so much for being here. So generative AI and large language models have really opened up some exciting new possibilities for developers looking to build intelligent applications, right? I mean, we can just use natural language with a model to extract key details, summarize lots of data, make SQL queries, do object detection, and way more. But the process of building and adapting these models to specific use cases can be difficult and sometimes requires deep expertise and substantial computing resources. But I'm really excited to introduce you to the InstructLab project and show you how to tune and integrate an open source model into an existing application that I'm working to add AI capabilities for. So InstructLab is an incredible open source project that aims to make LLM tuning accessible to developers and data scientists of all skill levels on consumer grade hardware, just like we'll see on my MacBook here in a second. Now, this project was initially started as a collaboration between IBM Research and Red Hat, but it's absolutely taken off in the past few months and I think you'll understand why because it's based around a research paper that introduces a methodology to enable community-driven LLM development and evolution. It starts out here on the left by combining collaborative knowledge creation through a taxonomy model for specific skills and knowledge, then working with a teacher and critic model in order to generate synthetic training data and integrate that back into the model through instruction training. And this is so exciting because we're essentially modeling how we learn, right? From base knowledge that we start with using a, a open source foundation model like Mistral or the new Granite models, then learning new skills and information about topics that we care about on top of the base model. And that's what's so amazing is because of the power of open source, there's tons of open source community contributions in the form of pull requests that support regular builds of an enhanced foundational model that you can use today from Hugging Face. And this whole training process isn't over months or weeks, it's in the matter of hours, even on consumer grade hardware. So I wanna switch over and show you the example application that I'm working with today. So I, this is an example insurance application my team is working on for handling customer insurance claims. So check this out. Initially, we started off with the raw information from customer emails, but our top tier engineers and summer interns have started to already use AI to extract key details from claims and format it here by using Gen AI models to parse through the data. And this is already saving our employees valuable time going through new claims, but we want to add an internal chatbot here actually to help answer industry and company specific data for these insurance claims, questions that a closed source model like ChatGPT simply won't know because of what it was trained on. But this could be a good use case for RAG, right? Retrieval augmented generation using vector databases that contains specific knowledge provided to a base model before it responds. But I wanna show you how the InstructLab project lets me integrate this new knowledge that we need for our insurance company into the foundational model itself. And think about this as RAG, but supercharged. Now at instructlab.ai, you can learn more about the training techniques that we'll use today to tune a model, or you can go to the GitHub organization in order to learn more and go to the InstructLab project in order to install it on your specific device. So for me, it was a pip install InstructLab. And this is as easy as it is to install InstructLab on your machine and get started working and fine tuning a model. And I'll show you in VS Code what we're gonna be working with today. So here's some of the information that we wanna fine tune the model with. It's a question and answer formatted YAML file with domain specific knowledge about one of the cars that we cover in our insurance organization, as well as a link to more information that's formatted in a markdown file here uh, that InstructLab is essentially going to pull during the training process and use to generate more synthetic training data that's going to further refine our model. Uh, and so we have answers and questions here. For example, how much does the DeLorean weigh? Weighs about two to 3,000 pounds. Um, and specific information that we might need to know, such as how much is a flux capacitor, which uh, in our information here costs $10 million. And you'll understand why this is handy here in a second. But let's go over to our terminal to understand how InstructLab works. So here in my terminal is where I can interact with InstructLab using the iLab CLI that I downloaded earlier. I can set up a new project with iLab in it in order to download a new taxonomy model to my local machine to add knowledge and skills to. Uh, and once we have a model downloaded that we're gonna be working with as a foundational model, we can serve it locally using iLab serve, which is going to allow us to uh, chat with it, but also generate synthetic training data. And you'll understand here why in a second. Now, what we've gone ahead and done is we've uploaded the uh, Q&A.yaml with those question and answer pairs to our local taxonomy repository and gone ahead and done iLab generate in order to generate 100 question and answer pairs to further refine and train this model based on our base model, which is the Merlinite, which is a derivative of Mistral. But you can choose which base model you'd like to use, whether it's Llama, Merlinite, uh, Mistral, or the new Granite models in collaboration with IBM. 
And you can see that we have new questions and answers being generated using this uh, information that we've provided in that taxonomy repository. Uh, new questions that we didn't even write ourselves that the teacher and critic model are generating. And I'll skip to the bottom here so you can understand that we've generated these 100 instructions uh, and based on the quality of them, discarded some of them. Uh, and that final training data is going to be used when we do an iLab train in order to generate the weights for this model. Uh, and after that, with the weights saved, we'll quantize this with the iLab convert uh, in order to finally have a GGUF formatted file here uh, that we can take and use in a variety of different formats and situations to share with others, or as you'll see, to use in my application to help answer questions in that little chatbot. Now we're back here in VS Code, and I want to show you the example insurance application that we were working with, but under the hood. So it's running on a Quarkus backend with the React front-end UI, and we can see that we're working with a really cool technology that's known as Langchain4j, which is the Java version of Langchain that abstracts the complexity of working with and calling models for my application. And here, all I have to do is to set the provider, which there's multiple providers, uh, and a call the model, which is actually being served at a local endpoint here based on the OpenAI standardized format. And there's a lot of reasons why you might want to work with a model that's running locally. Um, for being able to quickly set up an application and start serving a model, working with a local model is much easier. And for organizations, the ability to know where our data is going and to be able to retain full control of it is really important. And there's a variety of different ways to serve a model locally from Olama to LM Studio and more. But my favorite tool is actually the Podman AI Lab, which is a super fantastic tool to get started building AI applications because of a lot of features such as these recipes for sample applications, a curated collection of models that I can download super easily, and much more. So here in the Podman AI Lab, and I'll show you the interface right now, uh, it's an extension of Podman Desktop. And as I said before, it allows us to work with a curated collection of models from Hugging Face uh, to set up example applications uh, and playground environments, as we'll see here in a second. But what I'm going to go ahead and do is import a new model. And that model is actually going to be the trained model that we just exported uh, and converted from Instruct Labs CLI. And here we can see we can navigate to the path for this quantized model, but also give it a name. And so I'm going to call this Insurance Merlinite. Uh, and go ahead and import this model. And now we've got this new imported model that we can start as a service. So we'll define the container port and our application is looking for a model that's being served at port 8000. So we'll go ahead and set this up. And we can see here with the model running as a container on our local machine that we not only have the information about the endpoint in order to inference it on our local CPU, but also a way to easily get set up with our application. For example, if we're working with Quarkus Langchain for J, which is what we're doing today, having the ability to easily copy this code in and set up a AI service, which we've done in our application. And what's also really cool about Podman the AI Lab is we can really easily spin up a playground environment in order to do some testing and experimentation on our model. So I'll select uh, from my different models that I have loaded, but I've got the insurance model that we fine tuned with Instruct Lab. And here we can set different parameters, such as the temperature, the amount of tokens we want the model to respond with, the system prompts, uh, and more in order to test out how the model responds to different situations. But let's go ahead and head over to VS Code to see this in action. So back in my application, uh, with the Quarkus backend, we have the lane chain parameters set to that local model that's already being served with Podman AI Lab inside of a container. And we've also got a couple different resources here working with uh, a system message that we want to uh, give to this model each uh, response uh, with the claim summary as context. Uh, and so we've got a little bit of information here about what the model should say and how it should respond. Uh, and we've also got a WebSocket for the chatbot in order to uh, set up a new endpoint and way for users to communicate with this model that's being served and for the chat to go back and forth with the model. So let's head over to our application and see the new model in action. So back here in the insurance adjusting application, uh, we're working with a new uh, claim from Marty McFly. Looks like his DeLorean was in a little bit of an accident. We are working with a model here in order to detect the uh, amount of damage and severity, but also a model in order to extract some of the key details. But what we've just done in today's video is integrated a new chatbot with uh, new training data that was uh, integrated with Instruct Lab on top of the existing foundation model. 
Uh, and so what we're going to go ahead and do is ask, how much is a replacement flux capacitor for the DeLorean? And what's really neat is I just learned a flux capacitor it doesn't exist. Uh, but with this training data that we've integrated into um, the new model, uh, well, we've got quite a bit of information here. Uh, we now know that it costs $10 million for our example flux capacitor and maybe Marty McFly's premiums are going to skyrocket, which is unfortunate, but we've integrated this into the chat application. And this is just a practical way of how you can start integrating generative AI into your applications uh, and really make AI work for you. And I think this is really the next big innovation in, uh, in the AI space for open source. And so what I think is so special that with working with Instruct Lab in this project is that everything is in an open source format. We're working with open source models. We're being able to understand the training data that has been used to power the future of artificial intelligence and integrate it into our application. And I highly recommend you try out Instruct Lab and get involved with the community and check out the Instruct Lab handle for more news and updates. Thanks so much for watching. This is Cedric Labrin and have a wonderful day.